Before I go to that, good morning and welcome everyone. So we've got our panelists here. We've got Dan Davis, Jason Pritchard, and Kelly Byrne. So I'm going to start with Kelly, and can you just give us a bit of a brief introduction to who you are and what you're up to at the moment? Uh, so I'm Kelly. I am um, part of the HR team at Radnor Hills. So I believe you would have all had some Radnor Hills drinks today when you arrived. Um, yeah, so part of HR, part of looking after people's um, health and well-being and contracts and employment and all that kind of jazz. Um, I'm Dan Davis. I'm a history teacher in a school called Cymru, based here in Bilth. I've been here since September. I worked in, as an LSA before that. And previous to that, I spent a couple of years playing rugby in Spain. Jason? My name's Jason Pritchard. Um, I was born in Bilth Wells, so I uh, went to Bilth Wells High School, educated there. Um, worked for Toyota as a technician. Uh, through that, got into motorsport, um, developed my skills there, and now I work in the Toyota dealership as a, as a car salesman. Good, so Kelly, Ireland to the UK, back to Ireland, and back again to Radnor Hills, one of our leading lights of businesses in Paris. So, what, what made you come back and forth to the UK? What really drew you to come back to Britain? So when I was 21, I moved to London to uh, take up a career in performing arts. So I um, went to uni in London, did five years there, came back to Dublin, had a, had a, a good career in performing arts and dance. Um, and then when I kind of got into my 30s, I decided I wanted to go back to college. So I went and did a HR course. Um, and I don't know, Mid Wales just seemed like a nice place to, uh, to come and visit. I had friends that lived there, um, so I'd been over a few times and the position came available and it was just kind of too good to turn down really. So a bit of a lifestyle change is what I was after. Definitely going to Mid Wales and it is definitely the centre of the universe. There's a lot of rain, a lot of sheep <laughs> and a lot of fields. Exactly. So uh, Dan, Playing rugby for a living, then went into teaching, and then sort of went back playing rugby, and then back here to Bill Wales. And um, tell us a bit about that, you know, the rugby side of it. So, what brought you sort of into teaching from the rugby? I studied history in uh, university, and then I studied law, and then I had the chance to go to Spain to play rugby. So, I ended up in Spain for four years. Uh, the club out there got me a job teaching English when I was injured. So, I was I always thought I might be a teacher down the line, but so I just spent my time teaching English when I was injured. And then I decided that after about two shoulder operations, two knee operations, I think it was time to come home. So I'm originally from Shandovery, so the chance came to come up here for an interview. And luckily I got the job, so yeah, I've been up here since. I do miss the rain. Uh, I do miss the, I don't miss the, I don't miss the rain. I miss the sun, there we are. Jason, a local man just from down the road. So what really got you into the rally? You know, what really drove you to go into the family business from school? Um, watching my, my father and my, my uncle rallying as a kid, um, even on the roads here in the showground, um, that got me into it. Um, it's, it's a bit of a drug. You can't describe an adrenaline rush. So um, a lot of you may play rugby and it, you can't beat having a good hit in a ruck or a tackle or something like that. So. Uh, when you get to the end of the stage and your leg, your whole body is shaking from adrenaline, you, you, you can't describe that, that buzz. And once you've had that, it's, um, it's hard to let go of. Exactly. So, you know, Kelly, you know, you, you've obviously faced a lot of challenges, you know, going back and forth, now coming to settle in the best place in the world in Mid Wales. So what would you say your biggest challenge has been to date, you know, and how did you get through that? Um, probably, um just settling into a new place and not knowing anyone to start off with, that's always a big challenge. Um, also, Irish law and English law are quite different, so having to kind of adapt to English and Welsh laws is, was a bit of a challenge. Um, but I'd say just kind of finding, finding a gr good group of people when if you're going to move somewhere um, and kind of just getting in with them. Dan, I suppose, like you said, you've had a lot of injuries. I suppose rugby would have obviously been something which you wanted to do as a professional and done that professionally, judging by what you've, what you've said. You know, was it 
was it challenging for you then all the injuries you had not being able really to follow that through and was that a big challenge for you then having to do something else and how did you come through it yeah but i think if you play sport it matter if it's rugby football or, or race cars i think you're going to get injured somewhere along the line but the biggest challenge i faced was like when i moved to spain i didn't speak any spanish so uh, i managed to learn spanish so that's going to start making good stuff hopefully in the future so i've managed to learn something that I never thought, if you'd told me when I was in school that I'd be able to speak Spanish, I don't think I'd ever think, well, I wouldn't have believed you. So yeah, the injuries are one thing, definitely, but I think the biggest challenge that I've ever faced is to be able to learn a new language and a new culture. So, but yeah, I think you just immerse yourself in it and you get on with it. And hopefully some of it sticks. Some of it did anyway. Gracias. De nada. <laughs> Jason, I suppose going into a family business is very difficult, something which I obviously do at home, you know, from the farming sort of things and all succession planning and everything like that. How do you, how is that a challenge for you and your, and your family is planning for the future? And how do you sort of address that with your own family? Um, a lot of people, um, you know, you go into a family business, um, you've got to start at the bottom, and that's what I did. I went there, finished school, um, started valeting cars, got into the Toyota Academy, so as I said, did a technician then, so I've been in the workshop, worked in the stores, now I'm in sales, so I'm gradually working my way through the family business, gathering all aspects of the business, so I understand how it runs, and then one day, when my parents want to retire, um, I'll understand it all and be able to run it. So do you think that's, that's key, being part of a family business? You sort of have to start off on the ground as such and work your way through, I think, because you think it's, it's better to do that rather than trying to come in at the top and have not sort of under yeah. any understanding of what's going on? You've, you've got to understand every aspect of a business. Um, and if I just work, walk, walked in there and started in the offices upstairs, um, I wouldn't have respect for the other members of staff that have been there longer. So you've all, all got to prove yourself work your way up the ladder um, and you know it takes a lot of work um, but you know if you give your dedication I haven't been given it on a plate I've had to earn where I am today and um, you know it's, it's thanks to that my parents are pushing me through now. Good. Kelly, success, drive, fashion, you must have got that in ample amounts. You know, what really drives you to succeed? You know, what, what makes you tick? You know what makes do you want to come here I know what drives you to succeed at Radnor Hills. Um, well, what makes me want to succeed at Radnor Hills is the business itself. Um, Radnor Hills is such a family oriented business. So you see it from, from it literally falling out of the sky to going into our boreholes to then coming out onto our production lines, being packaged, wrapped up, put on those lorries and seeing it go. You see it from literally start to finish. That is a drive because we know how hard everyone works there and we and we have a really good brand and a really good product so we're very proud of it so that's definitely one thing um and just having just having natural drive i think is that's just part of me anyway in everything i do i always want to succeed um and keeping the bosses happy i think is a, is a big one as well dan you know same sort of question really you've done different degrees now you're doing another another graduate degree in teaching you know and you must have got plenty of drive and ambition somewhere. You know, what, what really drives you on to do different things? I don't know, I think I'm a bit stupid to ask you, but no, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think it's in you, I think, just to improve and just like, to want to improve every day. So I'm doing a GTP now, so I'm currently training to be a teacher. So as long as the last class, the next class is better than the last class, I'm happy. But I, I think it's something that's inside you that you just, I don't know if it drives you on. I can't really explain it. Really. Jason, same sort of question, you know, in the, in especially in the sort of what you're doing and the rallying side and sales as well, you know, that there's got to be some drive and passion there. What really drives you in your business? I think we all, um, we're all here for a good time and a short time, and you all just want to achieve what you can, when you can, and, and take every opportunity. Um, with the motorsport side of thing, I built a few cars and got work through it that way, and it's always, you want the best, you want to be the best, you want to stand out from the crowd and you know, you just got to push yourself to be, stand out from everyone else basically. Kelly, you know, this is a question I always get asked by people, it's a double-edged question really. What's the best bit of advice you received and what's the worst piece of advice you've ever received? 
I don't say it to off your teachers because it's plenty here today. Um, the best bit of advice I received is probably from my dad. And he said that whatever I do, just give it my all. And if it doesn't work, there's always something else that you can do. Like I've done three different college courses now at this stage. Not that they didn't work out, but I always wanted to change my mind. And I've learned, like I was taught that that's okay to do that, that you can start a career at 18 and mid twenties decide, you know what, I might want to veer off and try something else and that's okay. So my dad always said, you know, if you, if you don't succeed or you don't really feel it, it's okay to, to change your mind and try something else. The worst bit of advice I've received, um, we are being filmed, so be careful what you yeah, say. Yeah, I know, it's censored. Um, oh God, I don't think I ever have. Not that I can think of. Come back to me, ask me in a minute, I'll think about it. Okay. Dan? Uh, the best piece of advice, yeah, is similar actually. Just be, like, be happy, because like it's taken me, I graduated 10 years ago, I think, the first time, but it's taken me 10 years to find out what I want to actually do, and I found something I'm passionate about, but there's no rush. Like, you know, you've got plenty of time. So when I was in school, when I was leaving school at 18, I didn't really know how to do it, I think. Um, and it's taken me, well, 12, but I'm not going to get my age right now. But it's taken me a few years then to find out what I want to do. Um, but yeah, just do things that you're happy to do it, and you're happy to get up in the morning and do it. Don't th do things that you don't like doing. And the worst piece of advice was don't go to Bill, because it's all worked out well in the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, the best bit of advice I had was from my father. Um, when I was in school, was, I only had one interest, and that was to go rallying. Um, it, it's very unlikely that I was going to get a full-time career in rallying, so his advice was to get a trade. Um, you'll always need plumbers, you'll always need builders, mechanics. So I was asked why I to, to be a mechanic, because if it didn't work out, I always had a trade to fall back on. Um, worst bit of advice, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever given me bad advice. Um, or if they have, you just didn't take it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you use a bit of common sense, if you think that's a bit dodgy, just ignore them. <laughs> exactly. Do you have mentors? Do you have a mentor? Is that like your family, your dad, that sort of thing? Is he a mentor for you? Yeah, he's a bit of a mentor for me. But when I was younger as well, I was selected for an elite scheme. Um, that was part of the, the MSA, so the governing body of rallying. Um, and they used to mentor me, prepare me um, with my nutrition, uh, psychology, I used to go on all courses for that. Um, so I've, I've been trained for all that, and obviously I'm, I'm a bit older now, so I'm not in that scheme, but it, it sticks with me. Yeah, well, I've always found mentors extremely useful, someone just to sound off against it. Do you too, Dan, do you, do you always feel like that mentors are always somebody you can go to, someone to have a chat to if you're not sure of things? Yeah, I think it's important to have people that you can ask questions to and like bounce ideas off, because otherwise, Sometimes you end up banging your head against the wall, and I think it's important to get things off your chest. And if you've got an idea, and I think it's really important that if you've got an idea, you can ask someone, and they can tell you, "Yeah, that's a good idea." Or, "No, don't ever try that. That's nonsense. We all worked." Good. Kelly? Yeah, probably my dad as well. So he is—he's um, been in HR for thirty odd years. So it was kind of—I was brought up with it. So when I decided to do it in my later life. Um, I call him on a weekly basis just to kind of shoot the breeze with him and just see if you know he's got any advice or he thinks of other ways of doing things that I might not have thought of yet. So yeah, my dad is the guy I go to. We always do seem to be our parents always are sounding boards for a lot of things. I think that's very important, especially young people listening. If you're not sure, just ask your parents. There are good people to go to and ask questions to, or family members or extended and friends, people you can just sound things off against. So I think that's really good. Uh, a couple of last questions. You know, a bit more more interviewee type questions now if you were sat in front of a panel going for a job you know i'll start with kelly you know if you could have dinner with three people from history who would they be and why michael jackson if that's what you, do they have to be alive or dead or does it matter it doesn't really it matter they can be who you want to be <laughs> um, it michael could be me if you want <laughs> <laughs> so michael jackson um because he's just amazing and fab um probably president obama i'd say he'd be a kind of cool person to sit with and have a and have a chat with and 
Brian O'Driscoll. No. No. Go for it. He's a yeah. role model for a lot of young people out there. He's an amazing rugby player and done an amazing good for Irish sport. Yeah. Damn. You'll have been time to think about it then. Jason, yeah. you're lucky on this one. It's still a struggling, yeah. Like, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Ask Jason. <laughs> Jason, have you got three people? You look I like a, a man who knows what he's doing. I, I got a couple. Um, one would be um, Conor McRae. Um, another one would be Kimmy Raikkonen. Two reasons. They both uh, enjoy a good party. Um, so, uh, and the third one. Um, I don't know, really. Um, someone that's up for a laugh. Someone like Scott Quinnell because um, I think you'd have a lot of banter on the night and it'd just uh, be entertaining. And again, you talk to one another and you bounce ideas off each other and uh, you pick up a lot of things from evenings like that. You find anybody now, Dan? Yeah. Deep, deep, in your, deep down in your mind? Yeah, Andy Powell from Brecon. Uh, Good choice. <laughs> Johnny Bowie, the WA Hub officer from Berkeley, school Callum Cymru. <laughs> and yourself, then. Oh, thank you. That's very, that's very kind of you. I might try come and play in Bills one day and we can have a good night out after. So uh, there's a lot of young people here, you know, we're trying to round this to a close now. So what, what piece of advice would you give for a young person still in school, not quite sure what they want to do? They've got a lot of choice here today. You've got something to tell them. What do you think is the best bit of advice you could give some young person in school? Just... Do something that makes you happy um, and that you have passion for because like was said earlier if you don't have passion for it you spend all your time at work or college more time that you spend at home so it has to be something that you really enjoy that you're really passionate about um, and like I said earlier if it doesn't work out it's not the end of the world there's always other avenues and other things and other roads that you can go down so if you're not quite sure yet it's okay yeah. yeah, I echo what I said earlier. I think uh, it's really important that you get up in the morning and really want to do what you want to do. But then, like, like I said there, when I was 18, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. When I was 16, I had lesser idea. So I think it's really important, just you'll find yourself along the way. Uh, don't be rushed into doing something straight away because you might find that you're doing something that you don't want to do. And then it's too, maybe it'll be too late, but just find something you want to do. However long it takes, just find what you want to do. Um, just take any opportunity that comes your way. Um, don't follow the crowd. So if your friends all want to go to university, but you think maybe that's not for yourself, don't. Don't feel pressured into doing something you don't want to. If you want to go to college or start a career, there's plenty of opportunities to speak to people today. Just do your own thing. Um, you know, your life will take you a different path. Like you said, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't matter. You can always go on another one after. Just, it's great to hear those comments. You know, the best bit of advice I was always given, don't be worried, because money doesn't buy you happiness. And you've always, you're have always you going to be a long time in work, so always go and do something you thoroughly enjoy, that you can get you out of bed at 7 o'clock in the morning, and you can come home just as happy as when you went to work. So I'm going to bring this session now to a close. I think I've had the nod that it's time to draw it to a finish. So I'd like to thank Kelly, Dan, and Jason, and all of you for watching, and could you please give our panelists a big round of applause. The Arkham Varian, thank you very much, and I'm sure the rest of the afternoon will be a raging success. So go and enjoy everything what's here. Go and visit all the stands. You never know your future career could be in this room. Thank you very much, the Arkham Varian.